Hi, this is John Haddad. Today I'm going to be introducing you to CQL Engine, building a small project out using Python. I'm going to be doing my editing in IntelliJ. I'm going to be using Nose in the command line to run our tests. First up, we're going to set up a bin directory and a custom test runner around Nose. This is going to make it easier to set up our database when we run our tests. It's not required, but will make it easier to change our data model as we work. Eventually, there's going to be a little bit more meat here, but for now, this is it. By default, Python doesn't add your current working directory to its search path, so we're going to go ahead and add that now in our test runner. Now we're going to set up our database connection. It's here that we specify which server we're going to talk to, and which key space we're going to use. Since this is only a demo, we're going to hard code localhost. If this was actually a production environment, we'd want to do something a little smarter, like read this out of a config file, or even better, environment variables. We're going to go ahead and throw this connection in our test runner so that we only connect to the database once per time that we run our tests. This is going to be a really simple application. For now, we're going to start with just users and photos. The primary key for our users is going to be an auto-generated UUID. For our photos, we're going to use the user ID as the partition key and the photo ID, which we're going to auto-generate as the clustering key. Now what this does is it means that all photos with the same user ID are going to be stored together on disk. This means that even if the user uploads 100,000 photos, all their photos are going to be stored together. We're going to go ahead and have our test runner sync each of our tables every time our tests are run. Sync table applies the changes we make in our Python data model to our Cassandra schema in a non-destructive fashion. This means it will never drop or change columns, only add new ones. Using CQLSH and the describe command, we can see that the user and photo tables don't exist in our key space yet. Once we run our tests, the tables will be created. It's easy to make changes to our data model. We simply add new fields to our Python model, and they're automatically synced to Cassandra. Let's make photos a little more interesting with the name and URL. When we run our tests, the tables are automatically synced. We can verify this in the CQLSH shell and the describe key space command. You can see that the name and URL have been added to the photo table with the correct data types. Now I'll create a basic test which demonstrates how easy it is to work with CQL engine models. Here I'll show how to insert and retrieve data from Cassandra. I'm going to create a user in the system to represent me, as well as the first what I can only assume are tens of thousands of photos. That'll be my profile picture. When I work in tests, I typically split the window so we can see our original model as a reference. When we created the original photo data model, we gave it a partition key of user ID and a clustering key of photo ID. When using this technique, it's required that you provide the partition key when inserting data. Let's see what happens if we don't provide a user ID. When we run our tests, we get an exception that we're missing the mandatory user ID. This is because Cassandra uses the partition key to determine where to store and find the data in the cluster. Without the partition key, it doesn't know where to store the data. You can think of Cassandra as a giant hash table. When we go back to our tests, we can fix the mistake by adding the user ID to the create statement. When we run our tests again, we'll discover that they now pass. At this point, you should be able to get an application up and running using CQL Engine to talk to Cassandra. If you run into any issues, we have a mailing list when we're happy to provide support. 
You should also subscribe to this channel as well as Planet Cassandra for more Cassandra videos. Thank you.